And it is seven something. Maybe seven o'clock on the dot. Seven o'clock on the dot. I'm going to get a prize tonight. Nice. All right. So, first uh, item is commissioner updates. Do we have any commissioner updates? Well, we, so I met with Tim, Alicia, and Jen Gold, and Kaz about the Camp T space. Mm -hmm. So we discussed that. And it seems like we could use a formal agreement, right? But you were going to move forward with having conversations and see how that goes. Yep. So um, Cavs has had a conversation about space. Um, and it does sound like they are going to be amenable to allow us to have more space. Okay. Um, additionally, I remember the last date that we said was August 11th. So that would give us at least the second week into August, which is extremely helpful for us. Um, so yeah, uh, that was a, a good outcome for this go around. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yep. Very good. Any other updates? All right. Like it. All right. <laughs> so acceptance of the minutes for the 7th November meeting. I don't think there are any surprises. Looks good. So I move to accept the November 8th minutes. All right. Can we get a second? I'll second. Second. All right. All in favor? All right. Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Good time. And so, memorial request for Faye, uh, Faye Park, Sharon Marcotte. Um, so give me one second here. Yep. Share the screen. Um, so we did, we do have Sharon here um, via Zoom. And let me pull up the share screen. Yeah. Um, so here. Um, so we did meet. Uh, that was something that had been uh, asked of us. Um, so just as a reminder, uh, Sharon, if you want to kind of run through uh, again, just about the request for the Bay Park, if you don't mind. Uh, sure. Hi, um, I'm Sharon Marcotte of Richmond, New Hampshire. And um, uh, I had talked um, last month about um, the potential of doing a, a memorial at Bay Park for my brother. Um, and uh, we had kind of discussed a, you know, a few different options and uh, placement and um, different things. I, I had initially talked about doing a boulder. Um, you folks had kind of um, were leaning towards the, the bench idea, which I'm perfectly fine with. And so I just wanted to come back to you today, um, talk a little bit more about the project, about... Um, uh, the type of bench potentially. Um, I went with Alicia um, last week and we looked at some locations in the park. I think she's got a, uh, a slide there with a. Uh, <laughs> I kind of learned it really cute. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> <Art is rendering. laughs> with a virtual <laughs> bench. That's awesome. <laughs> um, so that's great. And then, you know, and then we, you know, took pictures of the, the bench that's there currently as well. Um, and so uh, basically, um, I really like the location uh, that um, I looked at uh, with Alicia, with Alicia um, which is to the right side of the gazebo, as you can see where that new tree, I think it was planted last year or the year before. 
um, yep. in that vicinity. Um, and so today I'm really, you know, again, just is this something we can do and talk about the actual type of bench as far as, um, you know, the material, um, whether that being granite or metal or um, composite. I'm, I'm personally not a fan of the wood. Um, I know there's a wood bench there already and it, it, it does look like it's held up fairly well um, over the years, um, but it does kind of lend itself to, to rotting um, uh, eventually. And um, it's just not my personal uh, preference, but um, so I'm proposing basically um, either uh, a granite bench um, or a uh, metal bench. Actually, right now is kind of what's in my in my head. Um, my husband is a uh, he's actually a fabricator, and he has volunteered himself to actually build a custom bench. Um, would be similar to one um, of the benches. I think there should be, um, I can't see it on my screen, but I don't know if there's a picture of the metal benches examples. Um, so I just wanted to kind of see, yeah, so there's one of the metal benches. I think there's a second one as well um, that I would be looking to, to, to um, adhere a, a plaque to as well to, to the bench itself. Um, and there's an example of a composite bench there too, um, as well. Um, so just want to see what your thoughts are and, and uh, want to see where we go from here. Where's the location? I just kept. Yeah, picture. so the, the location that we, let me go back here. Um, the location that we said would be a really great spot for a bench bench is over uh it is actually if you're looking at the gazebo off to the left hand side oh, of it yeah. um okay. so uh, a few years ago the shade tree commission had put in a, a brand new tree um so it would be uh next to around that space uh which would be actually opposite sides of where the other bench sure. is currently um so yeah What? Do you want to oh, suggest it? Um, I'll go back here. Where are we at? Hey, Sharon. How are you doing? Tim Mahowski. Um, I don't think we've met yet. Uh, right. So prior to the meeting, one of the things I noticed looking through the packet was that it looks like he was a pretty avid cyclist based on the picture. Yes. So I know your original request was that you preferred doing a boulder. Um, the one thing that I had just mentioned to Alicia just having seen this was... Um, potentially putting a boulder over by our bike rack right when you come into the park. Um, I didn't know if that would kind of tie things together and, and meet your first ask of putting in a boulder because I, I thought that was your preferred method from what I read. So I just wanted to put that the, out there as well. I know you and Alicia had spoken about it, um, but just wanted to, you know, give you that idea as well. And it's right yeah. there. Right there. Yeah. Um, no, I, you know, I'm certainly, you know, the, um, you know, the boulder will last forever. Um, so I'm s still certainly, um, interested in doing the boulder. Um, if that's an option, um, I guess I would want to take one more look. Um, I know, I know where the, the bike rack is. Um, I guess I would want to just take another peek as peek at it, you know, just drive over there and, and take a look. Um, just at the location, but that is um, certainly something that I am open to. Um, no, is that, really cool is that the, um, if we did the boulder, um, it would be at that location, or would I be able to put it in another location if I said, oh, you know, I don't really like where that is, or if, <laughs> if that makes sense, or... Um, yeah, I, I hear what you're saying on that one. Um, so the, just to kind of give you, if you can see this um, picture that's up here, the previous bench. Um, 
So where the playground is behind it, um, kind of up towards the road uh, a little bit, you, the um, bike rack is pretty much like right over here in this area. So Yeah, I do remember seeing it. I just yeah. can't get a good picture of it in my head as to what it looks like around, around that um, bike rack. But I do, I definitely like that idea. Um, so I'm glad that, that you brought that up. I do. Um, we'd definitely be potentially interested in that. Yeah. Well, so that would be the other is thing is if we, <laughs> <laughs> you know, if, if, you know, in our conversations, if we ever did a renovation, then yes, we might do it, but then that would just make a nicer space to be able to right. put the boulder and stuff in the future, right? So. And this was one of the things that Sharon and I had talked about is, you know, on the capital plan, we do have requests down the line to, to, to you know, do work down there at Bay Park. And um, so to not know what the structure of that may be in, you know, I don't know, five, six years, um, I want to make sure that we're thinking about that now for placement of this so it can live where it's going to live, you know. Okay. Based on Potentially, right? Yeah. And all three of the bench options, how would those, how would those be put in? Would those need to be cemented in or they just placed in there and hope they don't get some top work? Sharon, do you want to uh, speak to that a little bit? He was asking about the population okay. of the benches. Um, I didn't quite hear him about the, the placement of how it would be placed. I'm just making. I'm just curious how they are going to be installed so that nobody walks off with them. Sure, sure. So, um, depending on the bench, for for example, um, a composite bench or a metal bench, um, we would do um, sonotubes in the ground, and then it would be pinned to um, the sonotubes to cement. Um, so those sonotubes would be filled with cement, and then the bench would be literally pinned to to that, to the ground, so it wouldn't be able to move. Similar to the bench that's there now, um, as you can see, it doesn't have a cement pad, um, but I believe that it probably has, also has sonotubes. It's very solidly um, placed in the ground there. Um, and the other option would be to do a cement pad itself under the bench. Um, so it could either be done with, with sonotubes or, or a cement pad. All right, any other questions? So should we make a decision on the benches we prefer if the rock is not a decision or is the rock what we Uh so there well there's a few decisions to be made. So one would be yes, do you have a preference over the boulder versus a bench? Um and if you do want to go with a bench, then what type of bench? And are you okay with that location? A couple of pieces. A few pieces. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and, and we could also just sort of like put it to your discretion with Sharon's input about style of bench, boulder, okay. placement. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. You could totally do that if you wish. Say boulder first, then the bench, and for Shiva, find your relative that wants to do a custom one, though. I agree that what is not the right option. Yeah. I mean, I like Tim's idea if it's going back to her, if that's really what she wants, a boulder, and if that's more meaningful, then that would be nicer to do for their memory. Right. And I like the idea of if it makes sense to have it close to the bike rack, if this is a sample of what the black is going to look like. Since he was an avid cyclist, yeah. and it's, I mean, it ties in really nicely right. to, yeah, versus sitting and being active, right? I mean, that's well bolder for us. That, that's yeah. that's her choice. That's what she preferred. It needs more of that. I have. Okay. All right. So, can we agree? I guess. I don't know that we have to vote on this, right? Because, uh, you do because to, to it's going to be an amendment to the layout of the actual park itself. Okay. Can so I, that's can under your. One more question. Sure. Yeah. Um, 
because I know you mentioned that this was part of. So, um, Sharon, did you pick Bay Park for any particular reason? Um, it's just um, always been a, a place that I've loved uh, growing up in Littleton. Um, so it, it holds no specific significance um, to to myself or my brother. Um, you know, there's no like one specific like memory uh, uh, at Bay Park. It's just a really pretty park. It's a nice place. Um, enjoyed time there, like I said, growing up. And you both grew up here, right? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. The, the only reason I was asking is if you wanted another option for the boulder is we had just, you know, did a lot of the landscaping at Long Lake and that actually is a really nice um, place kind of there's some new trees next to the bike rack there's some really nice grasses that could be a really nice place to have it as well that would really get a lot of um, a lot of views as well so just you know something to think about if you want to look at that site as well but that would that would fit really nicely into the landscaping as well down there okay I appreciate that suggestion <laughs> All right, so we've got two, let's say here. Um, so we've got a couple different new options and we've got the old options. So why don't we, um, how, do we play, how do we make this into something that's- <laughs> Full time, sure, go back and look at the options. Again. Yeah, I guess, so why don't we do that? Why don't we, I hate to do this again, sort of throw it back at you guys so that we come with like maybe a option one, option two kind of thing. Um, because with I, the boulder specifically? With whatever, like okay. if it's a boulder at Fay Park, it's kind of like Clue, you know, the, with the boulder at Fay Park. <laughs> or with the, you know, bench at Long Lake <laughs> with the candlestick. So, <laughs> so when we actually met these these were this was the location that we had decided for the bench okay so but with uh i think at that time after last meeting we were thinking you guys were going more towards bench but if we're going back towards boulder we can totally do that i mean i i don't know how you feel sharon but you know we've got time because we're not going to be able to do much in the winter anyway Right, 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 right. Obviously, this isn't all going to happen until the springtime. Um, but yeah, I guess, um, you know, Boulder first, bench second. Um, I'm just not 100% sure about the Boulder by the bike rack. Like I okay. said, I, I need to go and I need to look. Um, yeah. If I, I have the option, back all this way. <laughs> I guess, I guess my other question is, is, is there an option if we went with the Boulder option? Can I place it kind of where I might want, want to put a bench um, where I, where we were looking at for the bench? Oh, I see what you're saying. So um, if we decided to go with the boulder option where yeah. I'm showing the benches now, we would have the boulder there instead. Potentially. I'm not against the bike rack. I just, I need to see it. I need to okay. visualize it myself. Yeah. Yeah. So how about we do, um, again, I hate to do that to you, but if we can meet again and we'll go through and just, uh, we can look at um, the bike rack there and then maybe go down and take a look at Long Lake too, just so you see that that uh, as an option as well. Okay. Um, so yeah, that could be uh, a good one as well, so. How much time does your husband need to fabricate the bench? Because I feel like that would be the only constraint to get this done before spring. Oh, um, he would have no issue getting it done before spring. So even if we didn't decide on this until, you know, next month, okay. um, that gives him more than enough time to um, to manufacture the bench if, if we went, went that route. Yeah. Awesome. Um, are you okay with that? Yep. Okay. Yep. So um, then we will just uh, table this and bring it back yep. in January and... Uh, Sharon, you and I will set up a meeting and uh, we'll go take a look at some of those spots. Okay, great. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no worries. All right. Have a great night. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you, Sharon. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.
All right, acceptance of program coordinator regrade. Yes. So this um, again, I'm gonna we'll just use our paper here instead of having stuff up. Um, so we <laughs> like where do I start? Where do I start? Um, we've gone through a couple iterations of doing the class and compensation study over the last few years. Um, but we finally got into a place where uh, they have created a new grid. Uh, it did get approved at town meeting. However, they did not uh, link any of the jobs associated with the grid um, because there were some issues that had happened. So um, one of the issues that we had specifically in our department was the team program lead position was graded at the same position as the program coordinator. Uh, the issue with that is that the program coordinator is the supervisor of the team uh, program lead. So um, with that, uh, we looked at the program coordinator job description. It hadn't been edited for a while, so we re-edited it, uh, sent it into the um, the committee for um, advising to the personnel um, and they looked at it and regraded it to, it was originally graded as a 10 and they regraded it to an 11 now. Um, the select board did approve this regrade on the 5th of December, um, but this is also something that's under the purview of the park commission. So to have your support with that uh, would also be appreciated. Uh, so I do have a copy here of the updated job description. Um, if you have any questions about any of that, I'm happy to answer. Agreed 12. Agreed 12. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, nothing that nothing's really been associated oh, with it yet. <laughs> so technically, right now, Tim is a 13. Um can't remember if I'm a 15. No, no 16? 16. Yeah. Um, so they do have some of them attached, but it's, yep. Sorry. We're in this flex place of trying to figure all these things out. And the grades are related to responsibility, the steps are related to seniority or something else? Yeah, no, you got it. Um, it's uh, So theoretically, in a perfect world, um, we would all get hired on as whatever our grade is in step one. Um, so as we go along, so, you know, technically if I'm going on my eighth year, then I would be going into a step in eight. Um, the, the, somewhere along the way you move from 15 to a 16, do you, you go back to one? Do you go back to one? Right. So, uh, that's the issue that happens on the second part of this that we'll talk about. Um, <laughs> that's odd. <laughs> It, that is based on senior, I'm just saying. Yeah, so yeah, we'll talk about that. It doesn't always work in a perfect world. It's, and it did not work out for us. Uh, so okay. your years yeah. in that position essentially is the is the step part. Say so that again. It's the step part is years in that position. Right. Or in that, yeah. Those, and uh, the, the one thing that we're allowed in, um if if you're hiring, we as department heads get flex between like step one and three. So if we have somebody that has a lot of really great experience and we want to, you know, be competitive and bring them in, um, we could ask for a three. If we wanted to ask for anything more than that, then we would have to go to the select board. Real quick. So yeah, the first ask is just specifically about the, the job description. If you guys are happy with it, Hmm? You do, yeah. I mean, so this has already gone through personnel, gone through personnel, already gone through select board. So this is just sort of, you know, yeah. ceremonial. Ceremonial, 
Well, it's not and, just ceremonial. It also affects our bottom line because the bumps come out of the come out of the program fees. Correct. Sure. So yes, the uh, increase of this would. What's the difference? Um, it was about. So CADS originally had like I have it in a second. So it's about he got like a twenty cent increase. Oh, okay. Um, and now it would be up to I think one fifty, and that's per hour, like a dollar, a dollar fifty per hour for an increase. Yes, yeah. So ultimately, a grade eleven would make sixty four thousand two hundred and six dollars uh, for a year. They are hours. So it'd be thirty dollars and seventy-five cents per hour. That's about a thirty one hundred dollar total yearly increase. Say that again. That's 30, about a thirty one hundred dollars three thousand one hundred and twenty dollars. I mean, in my bad math, you know. In yeah. <laughs> No. It's very quick math, you know, 150 yeah. times 40 hours a week times 52 weeks. So it's, you know, okay. Let's throw that new math style. That's right, yes. <laughs> I, I was doing so, this, I was carrying the one. Yeah. The tens of their. So yeah. what it would have been was John would have gone from 63.642 to 64.206. However, we moved him to a step three, which I don't know. That's what it is. It's, it's, it's a little more at that point. This is the original move. Yeah. Because what happened was is Brent and Kaz both got moved to a one, which made them, you know, Salary-wise, there was no split on the seniority. Right. So, and then Brent went from a six sixty-five seventy-two to sixty-four two hundred six. So, basically, Kaz got a twelve hundred dollars raise and Brent got a four thousand dollars raise. So, that was one of the reasons that we kind of pushed Kaz out to the three as well. Will you so, read the last few numbers again? Because uh, it makes sense. Yeah, it didn't sound right. So, Brent. What you is he, about Brent went yeah, from sixty thousand five seventy two okay. to sixty four <laughs> okay. yeah. two hundred six. Yep. So that's and then as we pushed them out, so they both got similar bumps, overall bumps. Right. So are they both program coordinators? Okay, they are. Okay. Yeah, but Brent just had his one year anniversary on it's last Kaz Monday. Right, senior. senior. What about in terms of the job description? Mm -hmm. Did anything greatly change from the previous one? I mean, the big thing was just really trying to make the point of how much supervision and safety is uh, under their purview in these positions. I mean, John, John specifically is running the Camp T, which that's a huge responsibility. Um, Brent has been running the after school program as well as uh, he does teen adventures in the summertime. So uh, the, the previous job description did not do a very good job as far as explaining their responsibilities, not only to their staff, but to their participants and to the parents that um, are the kids that are coming to the students. Um, so this changes more of that wording to make it a lot more clear of what their responsibility is specifically. Uh, the other thing that we did add in here was um, being able to uh, get their first aid, so sorry, their Red Cross certification so they can actually have the health and safety instructor um, so that they can assist with doing training for their own staff because um, we do a lot of the training in-house. So that was something that had not been mentioned previously. Um, yeah. They are, yeah. Yeah, they will have a hand in that. Do I have any other additional responsibilities outside of that program for the position that Brent would not be doing? No. Do we call it a senior program for the 
You're making it more difficult, my friends. <laughs> Believe me. So the, this is the first step. And then step two. We'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> You're looking at the process. Are we are at all worried about absorbing these extra costs? No. Okay. All right. Not it's right not now. honestly at this point in time with the increase. Um, we've already talked about what you know the fees are, what they should be. Um, you know, we know after last year having the programs, especially in the summertime, just sell out. That you know we we are much more needed than we ever have been in in the past. So. It's not a concern about, um, you know, bringing that money in to be able to pay them. Um, so for me personally um, and professionally, I would say, no, I'm not concerned about that. All right. Are there any other questions? No. All right. Can we get a motion? Maybe. Move to approve the program coordinator regroup. Second that. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, good. Okay, part two. You ready, buddy? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> nope. So uh, we've already talked about the issue that it creates. So um, with this uh, increase to grade 11, it now brings um, John Kazangian, who's been here for four and a half years, um, to the same level as Brent, who, as the student says, just celebrated his one year anniversary. Um, Brent is absolutely amazing and he does have a ton of experience, but this does not give validation and appreciation for the hard work. I mean, Kaz puts so much into this job. And he really makes these programs run and shine. And, you know, we want to be able to uh, give him the accolades for that. So uh, part of that would be um, asking for him to be increased to a step three. Um, so he would go from that instead of the 64 to 06, um, he would be bumped up to... 67, uh, 463. Um, so, and, and again, this is something I did ask the, the select board. I was trying to get everything all done in, in one big package. Um, so they did approve uh, CAS uh, and they, uh, so those new rates will go into effect on January 1st and that's all of the grid changes. Yep. So do we have to vote for this as well? All right. Any questions? You okay with that? Okay. <laughs> All right. Good. Glad to hear it. All right. Can you entertain a motion? We will move that we accept the program coordinator step. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. And they will go into effect on January 1. January 1. 23. Yep. Is that the, the entirety of the new grading thing? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So if there's so <laughs> other departments, um, other job descriptions, we'll talk about the assistant director here in a little bit, um, that other departments are working on to be able to make sure that everything changes before the first January. So it's not just our department. Um, I think there are a few other people, but we've been a little more proactive. Um, okay, so third part to this. Um, we do have a vacancy. Um, so we would like to, since this has now been approved and gone through all the steps, uh, be able to post the program board coordinator position um, so that we can fill that vacancy uh, so that we can get somebody on board to, you know, the main areas that the, this person is going to focus on would be um, aquatics and uh, after school program. So um, Brent's ultimate intention was not to take over the after school program, um, but that's what we've had to do after having the vacancy. So uh, ultimately we would look to uh, him working with this new person to, to make that transition happen. 
Yep. So this is just a post. So yeah, so this would be approval to uh, post the position for program coordinator. Uh, and then we also have to do all the fun, I'll put up the, the um, read the motion, right? For the preliminary screening committee. So the and so in terms of budget, this has been factored in. Okay. Yes, since um we parted ways with the old program coordinators, it's monies that we haven't utilized. That, yeah. Well, it's this motion here that we have, right? <clears throat> oh, yeah, I guess you do have it on there. Um, and this would also be coming in at the great alarm step one. That's correct. And just an experienced candidate to bring in a I mean, uh, we couldn't go below a step one, right? right? So, yeah. yeah. Oh, I hear what you're saying. Above, yeah. yes. Oh, two, three. Brent will oh, get two, a bump three. in July as well. But yes. Technically, as long as you know, we don't exercise our ability to use step one and three, then there will be everything, a natural was, everything would be tiered. So, yeah. So even though this changes in January, changes in January, change. then natural and then. If everyone gets a satisfactory yep. employee review, they get their annual increase in July with those Okay. And who's on the preliminary screening committee? Uh, the preliminary screening committee is uh, Stephen Udy, Gary Wilson, and uh, Bill Schmidt. No, that's the well, that's the great. Oh, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I think that? That's so. In the past, like when we hired Kaz, Anthony was part of the screen yes. committee for that particular. <laughs> so there's all different options. Right. And it can be in That's all you've done to be okay. uh, Yeah, I was. Fred used to be our go to. Yep. Um, so the I did talk to the guys tonight, um, and they they are interested in in being part of that process. Um, so they just wanted me to throw that out there as well. But you guys can uh, choose who you feel. Um, but typically, yes, it would have uh, Tim and myself uh, on that. When you say the guys, you mean Kaz and Brent? Kaz and Brent, okay. yeah. Because it's something somebody yeah. they'd be working with, and sure. you know, I want them to definitely be part of the process. Um, and it's always three people. It doesn't have to be. It's been three, but it should be an odd number. In case yeah. You bring yeah. Tie. All right. We've, we've had in the past couple of rooms. Uh, tiebreaker kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So does somebody want to? Make the motion that's in our because we got to make that motion first, then we pick the preliminary committee. Or uh, yes, yeah. So, um, well, first you gotta we'll post it, right? So give a thumbs up to post it, and then yes, the creation the the main one to vote on is definitely the uh, reading of the preliminary screening committee. All right, I'll I'll read the motion. I motion that the Park Commission pro pro sorry. Motion that the Park Commission proposes that the preliminary screening committee conduct the screening process in executive session because having the candidate selection discussion in open session will be detrimental to the public body's ability to attract qualified applicants for the position of program coordinator. Second. All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? I'm doing all right. Now listen, I'm working hard here. Working hard. <laughs> all right. Do we also need a motion to post? Um, you might as well. 
moves that the commission approves the posting of the program coordinator link to second that. All right, I'll oppose. I mean, as I If not, all those in favor? All opposed? Um, so, yeah, the last thing would just be the discussion if, you know, you have a um, preference on who would be on that committee. So um, for those of you that are new to the process, um, the preliminary screening committee uh, does everything from the beginning to the end. Um, and we come to the board uh, when we've selected either one person or top few people. Um, usually it's, I don't think we've ever come with more than two. Um, so that's, uh, so everything. So from going through the resumes to whether we do, typically the last few we've been doing a first round interview and a second round interview. Um, it's kind of needed, especially for these sort of full-time positions. Um, second round, we kind of give them a little bit more about doing presentations and um, seeing how their mind works when it comes to programming and budgeting and all of those things. So, um, yeah, that, so it is really a, um, a full commitment to the whole process. Um, so, I don't know, any questions? Concerns. I think the only thing to clarify is, you know, there are daytime hours as part of the commitment. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, typically we'll start in he's anywhere as early as seven o'clock in the morning. And it's, we try to have them done by five o'clock, but I think it's, we've only done a couple. Like, right. Ones. And usually there's only like one offs that somebody really can't make it. Do you feel it would be a benefit having one of us since we're not able to like you guys are? To submit and be part of the process, or do you feel it is a better benefit having someone who's actually there? Well, if we have the guys, then we're an even group, right? Right. So we would need an additional person to be that. Does not. It does not have to be both of them. I'm just thinking out loud. What is more beneficial? I mean, we can do right. it all day and tell you what to do, but yeah. if it's not going to be benefiting, you just won't. So I would like your opinions on whether or not you feel what you feel would be a for you. Yeah. I mean, honestly, having both of them involved in, like I told them tonight, some of the process makes sense because this is someone they're going to work with. Um, I think, you know, their preference would be that they're there for the entire thing. I don't know that that's necessarily needed, um, but I do see their point on it. And I understand with our last experience um, that they very much would, would want to weigh in on that and, and know that we're hiring the right person. Right. So I, I know they would, they would do that for sure. Okay. I think they would be a benefit. I, think, I, think, I, think, I, think, I, I mean, either way, either you, I mean, it makes sense to either, I mean, if they're going to be part of it, it's going to be, uh, voting or adding their assessments, right. then you need well, another person right. to, to make it odd number. If if they're not, then you still need another person to make an odd number, whether they're right. one of us or somebody else. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm assuming that the said Anthony was part of it. No, it was uh, just in the, I mean, that was four yeah. years ago. Yeah. yeah. I would imagine right now he was. That's but not going to happen. Brian, Brian yeah. buried. And <laughs> he was also. You are absolutely correct. Honestly, yeah. yeah. Brian more than Anthony, but yeah, yeah. but also buried. So correct. Um, yeah, I would not go that route. I would not suggest going that route. But you yeah. can do what you wish. I, I mean, I can do it if so. If if Brad, if Brad. <laughs> I love it. Have you doing it right yeah. now? Yeah. I thought I was. Like, I don't know what happened all of a sudden? <laughs> if Kaz and Brent. <laughs> Want to take part? Then I'm happy to be the fifth wheel. Okay. Um, if it's only going to be three people, and either one of them want to do it, 
then I'm happy to step up. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm, I'll, I'll be the fifth person if need be. Um, and then if not, you know, whatever you guys decide, I'm fine with too. Yeah. I would be, I would just be leery of picking one over the other to be in the committee That's to create <laughs> ill will on the team. It's Correct. such a small team as it is. And they both have different experiences and yeah. they're both really valid. So I you don't want to alienate to them and upset right. them. Yeah. Thanks, Kate. So Kate just volunteered me for the year. Uh, I did. Yes, I did. <laughs> there could be some people who's really excited about it, too, though. Two more people are excited about it. <laughs> I don't think, think yeah, we seven is getting a wheel. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's it's all your day. <laughs> the conference table happens in the middle. I've been on the other end of that. Yeah, you know, no. Well, five is five. Yeah. Yeah, five is pushing the envelope. Yeah, because it gets a little scary once you're on the other end of that. Yeah. All right. So, um, any other? I mean, I, 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 I did it with the the last one, but I think you've got experience in this area, and it would make sense. So, sure. Uh, yep. Happy to do it. So, I will move that the selection committee, sorry, preliminary screening committee, be made up of uh, Alicia, Tim, Kaz, Rex, and Kevin. Section. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 I think I can vote for myself, right? So, I'm abstaining. You say that now after it's like, it's done, and it's torturous. <laughs> I think stuff. arduous is a better word. Yes. Well, I, it's, it's better word, Saul. <laughs> anyway, it's um, <laughs> it is a slog. Yes, very um, very rigid. Oh, yeah, it's like very rigid. Very rigid. Oh, like hiring in the yes. private world. Yes, yes. going to read the same exact question. Yeah, correct. Same exact tone. Read it the same way. Yes. Hello, <laughs> I am reading you this question. <laughs> All right. Uh, we have AI to do that. Right? Uh, we have AI to do that. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> um, That's all right. Program coordinator. All right. Statistically valid community needs assessment update. Okay. So still on hold. All right. Um, but it's not our Next. fault. Um, so it's uh, it's been with the uh, assistant town administrator. They um, are dealing with a lot, trying to be able to balance uh, the budget. It's it seeming to be a big task this year. Um, so until they can kind of come up with a game plan that's accept, accepted by the other boards and commissions, um, they're gonna be kind of focused on trying to balance that budget. So as soon as um, that process is starting to ease up, then that's the next thing that we'll move into. Um, so hopefully next month, I'll be able to give you an update that moving forward. And is that putting together the RFP or what's the- Yeah, so we, Tim started a long time ago with uh, putting together a bid to, to go out and it went through a few different iterations with uh, Joe Layden, who was the assistant director at that time. Um, and then I kind of picked up the process with Ryan over um, to the July, August. Um, and so essentially he wants to review and make sure that everything is listed on there. Uh, he is in charge of all the, the purchasing for the town. So that's something that you know, who just wants to make sure all the, the components are right. So uh, once we do that, then they can go to uh, companies and then hopefully we'll be able to choose a company and get started and, you know, hand it off to them because this is something that, you know, once we give them that baton, they're going to run with it. All right. Any other questions, comments? All right. 
special events update. All right. So the real reason Aaron wore a tie tonight was he is the champion of the 2022 yes. Bowl. And as you can see by your first picture, uh, him and his team holding the winning trophy. Uh, we did host the bowl uh two Friday nights ago. Um, we had a total of four teams compete uh, kind of really down this year. We thought moving to Friday would be helpful. Uh, last year, we had a total of six teams compete on Saturday morning, so we didn't really have too much of a... Don't play my win. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so many of us, 37 teams. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, it was a great night. Uh, we had a great group of people come out uh, and bowl for a great cause. Uh, so with that said, thank you to all the teams that did come out, uh, and I will let uh, Alicia kind of just discuss where we're at with the actual program since uh, that's kind of her baby. Oh. Um, so holiday helpers, we are getting to the pointy end of everything. Um, we have 23 families and 43 kids that are enrolled this year. So last year, I think we had 45 kids that were just down to, um, at the holiday bazaar, we gave out about half of the gift requests. That was unbelievable to just, I, I don't know, this program always just blows my mind with how giving this community is. So, um, the fact that like half of the requests were taken that that day was just you know a really beautiful thing. Um, so the rest have either been picked up at uh, Forty One Shattuck, um, or we purchased them with donations that have come in um, and trying to be shopping online to be ahead of everything and uh, trying to fill as much as we possibly can. Um, there are just a, a handful of need items. It's mostly like socks and underwear and things like that. So. If anybody wants to pop in and grab one of those and, I don't know, run down to Marshalls really quick and come back, that'd be awesome. Um, if you want to drop off the donation and we'll go shopping for you on Friday. We can do that too. <laughs> yep. So that's always our fun, uh, what do you call it? Start. Shop until you drop kind of day. So um, the deadline for gift returns is on the 16th. Um, so if anybody has any gifts that um, they need to turn in and maybe they're late online, just contact the office, let us know that. Uh, that would be really great. That's this Friday. This Friday. For all of you listening in. This, this Friday. Friday. Um, Preferably then, before 2 p.m. <laughs> Preferably. <laughs> um, so the, the families will come to, to pick up uh, next week, but it's only you're volunteering to come and help us out. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. Aaron's going to be there to help uh, handing out stuff. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's kind of where we're at. Uh, any questions? Sure. Yeah. So let's say 95% of the people are going to take mm -hmm. gold cards. Mm -hmm. How many of what percent of that have been returned? Like actually the gift has been brought in. Like how much outstanding stuff? Right. So we've got to be around 80. We got, we're definitely above 80%. We are for sure. Okay. So what happens on the 16th at 2 o'clock if those aren't in? And there hasn't been a message. So like, we be shopping. What happens? <laughs> yeah, we generally wait until Monday morning, and then we'll head out in different directions. And it's like back and forth. Like, did you find pink, pink snow pants? Do you have blue boots? Do you have? So it's kind of two sets of shopping. Then. It's whomever, yeah. yeah. whomever is the going off. Dump, and then you yeah. give it another few days in case it turns out. We don't really. I mean, honestly, Friday is the deadline. We hope to get everything back, but. We don't really engage in anything until Monday or Tuesday. And then it's, by that point, we buy anything we don't have, we have to go out and buy before pickup day. Right. Yeah. And then if we get it late, unfortunately, you know, we do have a bin that we keep till the next year and we use stuff from last year that was duplicates for this year to fulfill, yeah. you know, certain things. So it's nothing goes to waste. But if something came in late that we weren't able to get out, maybe we were the long we could get to it. We have to I have in the done past, that in don't. the past, yes. <laughs> yes. We try not to. Yeah. But it is. When is the distribution? Uh, it will be next Wednesday and Thursday. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think one thing just before we move on yeah. is, um, you know, in five years of doing this, uh, you know, one of the biggest assets we've had this year, just to give a plug, is Kelsey has done an absolutely she crushed it. I mean, crushed it. you know, the amount of work and care, and just the reason that the tags and we only have 11 left are her sheer will and force of getting this done. So, we, I would be remiss, and you know, we would be remiss if 
you know, we didn't say that and just probably say thank you, Kelsey, for everything that you did do with this. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, because posting them on Facebook has been great. Yeah. She's been doing a really good job with all of that. Right. That. Um, so next thing, our upcoming events. So uh, we got Tide and Tiaras coming up as the next one. Um, so that would be Friday, February 10th. Um, and then Fire and Ice, uh, which would be the following weekend on Saturday, February 18th. So where's Tides and Tiaras? It is the Shaker Lane Cafeteria. Okay. Um, historically, What's that? <laughs> Aaron, it's such a nice area. It's hopped up on sugar. <laughs> the, there's like the lights. It's free. So I, I mean, so one of the things, you know, obviously, obviously one of the things that we, we always work on with the park commission is, you know, policy and everything else. And, you know, we we haven't had this conversation for a while. So I would be remiss if I did not put it in your hands. Um, but historically, this was the father daughter dance. Um, at the request of some community members, we had a pretty lengthy conversation pre COVID the last year that we did this. Um, that was just canceled because of COVID. Um, but we did change the name to Time with the Tiaras. Um, typically, you know, this event is a um, a a daughter with some father figure. Um, father figure, we don't, you know, hold gender to or anything else. Daughter, same thing. We don't hold gender to that as well. But typically, that is the relationship that is, you know, um, put forth with this um, uh, this okay. dance event. Uh, so, you know, I just wanted to open it up to conversation because we do end up dealing with phone calls every single year about this. Um, historically, we have tried to do a mother son type uh, event and they always fall flat on their face. There's no interest. Um, and it's just something that, you know, it's a lot of work to put on for not, um, they never run anytime yeah. that we've tried to do them. Uh, and then, you know, the other opportunity is to allow anybody to come, which then a kind of in the community members who did represent the last time uh, they had made the case that it takes away kind of from the spirit of the event as it was initially created um so like i said it's it's just something that as the policy board just wanted to bring it to your attention we haven't talked about it in three years this is our first crack at it post covid and just wanted to put that out there for the world i wouldn't be allowing show you can i mean so typically the event i mean when it started it was a father daughter dance Right. No, I, right. I remember. Yeah. I remember I've gone to all the different things. So I don't, yeah. But I mean, I don't, it's not going to be a detriment to allow a father son or his dad and his son to show up. No. Yeah, we a would. daughter and a mother or whatever it is. Like, mm -hmm. As long as the DJ is not sitting there doing only daddy daughter dances and he's cognizant of the fact that it's not a daddy daughter dance. You know. Yeah. Well, and we changed that name to Ties and Tiaras with it, you know, trying to be a little more open. Um, yeah. Moms are going to want to go more than the anyways. And <laughs> that, I'd like. Yeah, the, the one thing, the one drawback from other places that have done it is then it kind of becomes more of just a community dance and you kind of get, you know, just people mingling. And it becomes kind of like a middle school dance rather than right. the. That's what happens now, though. I don't know. Like you, we were talking about it today. And... I have no opinion on this. Oh, I've done like, three, I've done like three years worth of those. I mean, the yeah. minute he gets in there, can I have twenty bucks? Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I have to like drag her to come hang out with me, but like maybe the slow dance. Yeah. Other than that, it's. Uh, you doing? Know <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll explain the The other thing, to your point, I don't know who said it is space constraints. Right. We open it up to that many people. We don't really have a location. Too small, sugar. 
Yep. I mean, so I mean, regardless of whether <laughs> we're inviting uh, some extra members or not, it's already it's too small. So I mean, that, that's a separate issue. We can't utilize that as, as a logical piece. Well, you can. It's more people that we would turn away. Is it in the cafeteria in Shaker Lane? Yeah. yeah. Yep. And it's too small. You get that big of a turnout. Yeah, they, they take up the whole piece. Yeah. One whole piece of it is taken up with teddy bears and balloons and vendors. No vendors. There's no vendors. Well, pizza, food, <laughs> raffle items, tickets. Aaron, I feel like there's a lot of There's no sponsors here this year. You can see that I think we have just began this about the mail. Motion to switch. Aaron is now the chair. It's <laughs> fine. I'm going to sign. Um, yeah, sorry. Right. We're going to open registration, so whatever you guys want to do. All right. That's, I don't, I personally don't see huge judgment. And I don't see that the whole dance is going to drastically change. I don't feel like that. There's going to be that much of a change. Well, are, you, are we? I think Tim's bringing it up. Are we just... turning anybody away now? No, we're not. Okay, so there is a what is a the theme? Of? There's a theme or a focus right now that could change if we wanted to, but that's really all that is correct. Correct. <clears throat> what we're talking about for now. Yes, it is marketed in a way that is a daughter and a father figure, non-gender so, descriptive. How? That's what I guess. That's the part I'm missing. How are you? How are you feeling? This is. That it's designed to daddy daughter one for annoying ties and tears. Because all we did was change the name for that was the request that was made last time. So the the concerns that some of the individuals had uh, that brought this up in the past were that they felt for any anyone that did not fit that gender description of being a dad or daughter was not, didn't, wouldn't feel comfortable coming, even if they wanted to. Is that because of something specific marketing that we were doing? Well, it was called well, the daddy. It's, the, it's, right. I know, daddy but now, even no. when we change, even in father, even in Titan Tiaras, I mean, it's, it's sold and it's marketed as, you know, father and one child. Is that what the brochure is going to say? Is that what you're trying to tell me? That's what it says. That's what it is in my record. Right so if that that that's the biggest thing is, okay. are you change? Do we want to change it from, you know, child and do we want to change it to adult child, child and parent and then that adult child? That's what I'm asking. So it's not right now. What you're telling me. it's never been. Okay. I think that was the piece that I was not grasping clearly. I think it should be a double I think adult and child is more inclusive. It could still be called ties and tiaras because any both could be wearing ties, both could be wearing tiaras. It doesn't matter. But I think it's more inclusive if it's the adult and child. No, that's why I wanted to bring it up. The last time we settled with leaving it as is with just name change. So before we push this out there, I just wanted to get everybody's feelings on it. Yeah, you would just face some sort of massive backlash against this. No. I'm okay. I'm, okay, that, I'm, I'm anticipating that we could have double the number of people is what I'm anticipating. Okay. So what happens? I mean, we, we, what so we, is, we I mean, do you have a, we've had too many people at tr trunk or treat. We've survived. <laughs> yeah, but we didn't, we That's all stuff that we can worry about down the road. Like I said, I wanted to just put this back out there. It's been, this will be three years since we've actually run the event because of COVID. And in our last iteration of this, we had a panel before us. The board opted to change the name, but not the spirit of the dance. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to put it before you. 
knowing that every time we push this out, we start to get some phone calls. So I guess I would similar lean towards keeping the spirit of the dance, but in terms of the registration. <clears throat> so the, the marketing and the spirit stay the same. So, so it would be it would the ticket would be parent and child. Right. Or adult child, yeah. Yeah. Adult, yeah, because it's, it's, it's child and, and father. It's, it's, that right now, it's child and father figure. So it would just be child and the guardian, or whatever, we, or yeah, parent yeah. figure, yeah. or whatever you want to. So, yeah. The only requirement is that they are required. I think they need to be over the age of twenty-one or that's, something like that. There, that's fine. Older brother twenty-one or twenty-five. Sister. I forget what our number. Let an is. older brother take his younger sister. I don't care. Yeah. Uncle younger uncle too. Yeah, we've had kind of think of yeah. Regardless of the situation. Yeah. Like I said, I just I wanted to bring it up. It's going out and you know there are things that need to be addressed. So thank you for doing this. Good. Yeah. Fire and ice, is there any fire and ice? Uh, uh, yeah, so it's gonna be Saturday, February 18th. Um uh pretty much it'll be Typically, exactly how it is. Um, hopefully, we have cold weather and the sledding hills open, and we do not have the ice rink up or plans to put the ice rink up this year. Uh, hopefully, you know, our future plans will be able to have an ice rink somewhere or have a space flat enough to actually put the ice rink back up. Um, but I have not, you know, even worked with Highway on that yet. Uh, okay. As far as other elements go, you know, we will have. The ice carvers, I'm trying to get a hold of the fire dancer again, all the different aspects that we have there. I will be at the fire department and discuss, you know, our op opportunities to do bonfire. Um, so all of that will be part of it. This one is weather dependent. It's one of the only ones that we actually put a rain snow date on. Uh, so that'll be, it's the 18th or the 25th. So it's book casing vacation week. Um, typically, we have found that the Saturday before vacation week, people haven't quite made the move yet, as many as the Saturday after. Um, we've done the event on both days. We found this, the one on the Saturday after that we did postpone for rain was very poorly attended because most people were away that Saturday traveling home. Um, but that's kind of the best place for this falls. And it's at Shattuck Street? Or? So, yes, it is at Shattuck Street. Unless anybody has any recommendations, because we no longer for flood Fay Park. Originally, that's where it was, and then when Fay Park was regraded, we didn't flood the park anymore because it did, you know, tons of damage to the grass, and basically the park didn't dry out. We had issues with there Thursday because you know the park wasn't dry by June. Um, all sorts of different reasons. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, we always had a wet spot there. Um, so. That's, you know, kind of that. If anybody has any ideas. How about library parking? Is that going to be, how's that going to be taken care of? I don't know the answer to that. We haven't dealt with that in the past. Just, it hasn't been an issue really in the past. Um, the, I mean, previously when the library was out front, we shut down the back parking lot. You know, it, it was always just kind of the last event that we had back there was trunk or tree. And the library wasn't done because yeah, so yeah. we don't have, and that's you know that's our constant conversation of you know the space that we have is squeezed, right? And the other spaces that we have are generally poorly lit and not good fit places to do things like this in a cold weather environment. What time does it start? It starts at one. It's one to five. It's library tools and stuff. No. <laughs> Would you ask what time the library closed? Yeah. Probably four, but I don't. I mean, we can look at one of the school parking lots as long as there's not a middle school dance. I'm just trying to <laughs> they could walk up through the path or play. <laughs> yeah, they could park on the street, you know, on Shattuck Street, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I know people can be parked there for this yeah. event, but yeah. <laughs> I always worry about the beach because I, depending on the year, yeah. I mean, if the ice isn't thick, there's no way, you know, you're attracting all of those people to that particular venue. If you're going there by yourself with the key intention to go ice skating on the lake, that's one thing. 
if we're hosting an event there and your kid wanders out on the ice and something happens, no. that would be a completely different liability piece. So that's why I've hesitated yeah. on that. And it's fire and ice. So you're like inviting people on the ice. Oh, yeah. 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 Ice is part of the yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that's, that would be my one concern with that because people out there on their own, that's their own decision. That's their own liability. If we invite people there and then something were to happen, we're attached to it. Up a lot of the point that urgent care over on Sundays. I know that that's <laughs> kind of Yes, it's open. Um, but I know it's open. I should be afraid that open. I meant like all day. I didn't know if it was like an eight to one or since they, Emerson is up there, they've really kind of pared back on doing stuff up there. Oh, okay. uh, the movie theater also because that's a pretty typically full. Um we did, you know, pre-COVID had a pretty decent relationship with the management group who ran the point. Yeah. After that, we haven't really done anything. Um, it's it's really kind of curtailed. So yeah. you know, okay. ideally, this is like one of those things that you know, in the future, if everything goes the way that it's projected to go, with like five fifty King Street and things like that, or you know, up in yeah. the orchard, there's other opportunities of space that is town space. Hopefully, in the future, that you know, we can look at changing some of this stuff too. In this particular instance, I think your best solutions are alumni field parking lot, middle oh. school parking lot, yeah. those kind of things. Especially if alumni yeah. field is covered in snow. And you know it's not being used yeah. at that point. Yeah. It's something that we could look at. The nice thing about doing it at town hall, though, is you get the sled hill. Yeah, you get the sled. You get the sled hill. hill. Yeah. You have indoor bathrooms. You yeah. have the multi-purpose room with heat. Yeah, there's all sorts of opportunity yeah. that comes with that. Yeah, yeah. If you decide, you know, the other the other thing is, secondly, or actually, kind of first, if you really look at it, if there's not basketball going on, the middle school parking lot becomes a good spot because not only do you have parking. But you could do it on the middle school soccer field. You could do it on the middle school field right there. And, you know, we could theoretically book out the full or at least half the gym to have, you know, for a warm-up area or things of that nature. So that's a, that's another opportunity to look at as well. I just don't really know where we would light a giant fire and have it cleaned up in time. Yeah. That's not the big problem. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? All right, on to the director's report. Back to you. Yeah. There we go. All right, so um, as always, review of department finances. Uh, we're going to talk about updating the assistant director job description, um, a sports council stipend, and uh, an updated list of the uh, capital improvement project lists. Um, just for you guys to go through and take a look because we talked about this last week. So um, now that we have gone through the town meeting and we are no longer using the enterprise, um, we've had to kind of do some creative uh, accounting uh, with our forecasting sheet just to make sure that everything balances out. Um, but Essentially, what um, to date, if we're talking about literally to date what we have spent, um, that would give us $63,000 in um, as a net. However, that would only be six months of liquidating the enterprise funds, right? So if you're looking at the entire allotment of the uh, uh, enterprise fund, then we would have uh, 426,900. So um, we're still doing really good. The whole point of uh, the enterprise switching over to the revolving again was that all of the revenue was going to go into our revolving to build it up. Um, we would spend down everything in the enterprise. So wages and um, uh, expenses would come out of the enterprise. And then um, when we go on to fiscal year 24, completely free of the enterprise, we would have that money built up in um, the revolving. So uh, right now, the amount that's in the actual revolving that has nothing to do with enterprise um, is at 367,928. So, um, you know, we're doing pretty good, we're on task. Um, 
the big things that are upcoming is that uh, the most, I think the most uh, current would be Camp Teen and Teen Adventure registrations are going to open as of January 1. Um, so that if you look at the yearly income um, table that we get off of uh, MyRex, it shows you that, you know, once we get into January, we're well into the positive uh, January, February, March, April, May, and June, which is the end of our fiscal year. So uh, we're swinging into that six months of, you know, bringing in that money that kind of pulls us, takes us over the uh, six months in um, fall and winter. So um, that's, that's what we're looking at there. Yes. January, January. You just sent the text January 1st. I don't know. At <laughs> one o'clock in the morning. Let's go. <laughs> um, so yes, it, it I'm guessing we're gonna sell out again. So I would, you know, use this as the public service announcement right now. Go on January 1 and uh you know hit the lower rate. <laughs> no, I don't think we're doing that. Yeah, right. Rates go up February. February, okay. Um, so any questions, comments, concerns? So, so the, go ahead. No, I was going to ask a, a, a personal, um, yeah. question, a personal interest. Will we know about soccer camps yet? <laughs> uh, if, are you talking about the camp T soccer combo? Yes. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we can only offer that any the only way that we can offer that is if the camp team numbers allow that okay yeah so that was just something by coincidence the cash tried last year because we had the staffing to be able to accommodate that um, and, like i drove the kids <laughs> <laughs> yes but once we once they got yeah. to long like we had plenty, <laughs> they got to long like we had plenty of people that kids. is absolutely true <laughs> Um, yes, we don't know that, but we also won't have, we don't even know when the soccer camps are going to be. Right, because that's the, the high school kids that, or the high school program that did it, right? Well, in combination with Littleton Youth Soccer. Yep. So uh, I don't know if they have uh, <laughs> not organized yet. So we can, working on it. He's working yeah. on doing a clinic with each of the youth sports organizations for the summer. So Sweet. So that answers your question. Yes, your question. So the, the wages question. coming out of the general fund is that year to date or is that? That's year to date. Okay. So and this is it's <clears throat> all of us. So it, it's kind of at this weird place right now where technically, CAS, Brent, all of the seasonal staff should be coming out of the enterprise for volume. Enterprise, Will the enterprise, be. okay, the enterprise that we're shutting down. Right, but we've shut it down and we've moved that money and that money legally can't be moved into the revolving. So it had to be put in the general okay. fund. Okay. So there's like a like a open bucket for all expenses and wages okay. um, that's coming out of the general fund right now. Okay, so it's coming out of the general fund because we put the remaining money from the enterprise Correct. fund in the general fund. Correct. Okay. You got it. Yeah. Okay. Yep. In order to I know. I, <laughs> yes. I, I'm not trying to confuse you or make you make it complicated. It just sadly is one of those situations. Because we have to buy pure by law. Yep. You know? yep. So yeah. Um but we will um there is going to be a uh, special town meeting, which is great. So we'll be able to shut down that enterprise, which you guys took a vote last month. Um, so that they're planning on it being February 7th right now. Um, but it, there's potential, it could, <laughs> well, there's potentially could push back because the main reason that we're having the special, uh, special meeting, they're trying to create a special petition and it, really needs to be worded correctly. So they're taking the time that they need to be able to do that. So, yeah. Um, okay. All right. So back to our class and compensation study. Woohoo! Um, so 
Tim's position, the assistant director position, also hadn't been updated since uh, 2016. Um, so it did also need to be updated to be able to fully express the, the role of the uh, assistant director. And um, so that is has been updated. It's currently into the human resources office uh, and also with the personnel advisory committee. Uh, so that is uh, in the process of being regraded. Uh, so we will, once, I'll come back next month and, and once they have that graded, we'll approve that. But as soon as it comes in, I'll go to the select board um, and process it that way. Um, so that's coming down the pipeline. Uh, but I'm also looking to be able to create a stipend. Um, so this is one of the things that um, has kind of come out of the discussion of you know, how do you reward people for doing excellent job or how are you able to um, give them extra funds for taking on extra work, right? So um, it's definitely something with a, a lot of the departments that's, that's becoming uh, something that we have to talk about. So um, I, I'm suggesting that we are going to create uh, a new sports council stipend um, and this would be for the extra work that's being taken on in spring, summer, and fall. Um, it will be funded through the revolving account, um, and that's something that we can add to the field maintenance budget line. And uh, the stipend essentially covers around five extra hours on like a, a monthly uh, basis throughout the year. So, um, yeah. Is that monthly stipend? Uh, so the stipend, I guess if it's 2,500, they're probably not going to do monthly. They might. That would not be a monthly stipend. Yeah, I would think they would just give it in one month. So. And English stipend. Yes. I just, just, yes. <laughs> I have no issue with the stipend itself. Okay. I think that we may get pushback if we put it on the field maintenance budget line. Okay. I think that, you know, I, I don't know. I'm guessing that, you know, I don't think it's a, it's, it's not a huge stipend and it's not a huge amount of money, but right. if it's one more thing that the that teams are paying the teams are paying for right. we make a pushback i'm right. fine doing it, yeah but i'm just i think we should just be aware that that may come. right um so and and you know that's definitely up for discussion you guys can uh, decide that you want to come from elsewhere that's totally fine um where did the 2500 was that from the select board no that was uh just the calculation on having like an extra five hours because it's not going to be you know like in winter time you're not really doing anything um but there's extra time that's put into having those meetings um going through i don't know if any of you here have done the scheduling meetings on for spring it's yeah. very long arduous meeting um so i'm just trying to to like create numbers to give yeah. you statistic of why is that number yeah so, okay. yeah, you got it. Um, so I hear you on that. So yeah. that's that's open for discussion if you wish. Um, no, but I, I think it's I think it's it's fine to you know when when that meeting comes up again, just say yeah, we've decided this and that's it. Right. Like we don't need, but it, it I I just think it may may come up. That's yeah, fine. I mean other places it could come out of would be just the general fund. Um, so sorry, the recreation general bucket. Yeah. Um, and that's usually like where we get like office supplies and, and things like that. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, is, it is else would be appropriate. Largely focused on managing the fields. Right. Right. I mean, that's the sport is managing the fields and yeah. the field users. So, yes. Yep. Seems it's, relatively appropriate. I you can't please everybody. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I certainly get the point. It's perhaps the wording of the the wording of it, if it was field management versus maintenance. 
that's just the name of the account the, line. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I mean, that's just, account. no, it's yeah. just the, <laughs> yeah. but conveying that. Right, yeah. Uh, that it's management versus maintenance. That that might only be the issue. I see what you're saying. But so just pushing that it's the managing the maintenance. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, you could change. We could change the name of it. No, I'm just no, saying no. it's just in the it's just in the communication about mm -hmm. what it's coming from. What What is the <laughs> total line that we're talking about? Like the that budget item that is being passed along to the, the that we're trying to have the sports leagues cover. Like, is this twenty five percent of the existing budget, or is it? Five percent or one percent. Oh, I don't think it's twenty five. I mean, we're just getting the um, invoices in now, and we just had soccer's, which was like eight thousand two hundred. So, and that's just one season, you know. I think I'm just thinking of like our It'd be yeah. a little less than ten percent. You feel like five hours a month is accurate. I mean, it, it it really just depends on the month. You know, there's times where we do less, and there's times that we do a lot more. You know, especially in the spring, I think it's an accurate representation of probably the annual average. You know, in the springtime, it's walking the fields almost on a daily basis. Right. Yeah. You know, no, it's it's access. Access. Yeah. So it's you know, updating the website. Figuring out on Saturdays and Sundays if we're going to allow people so to do balance. Out. It all balances out, right? And this is really just this is a this is part of a bigger conversation that's happening right now. That's the next page. No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. Yeah. Going to capital. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um. So, do we need a motion, or do we need a okay? That we accept the stipend creation. I'll work with that. As, as stated. <laughs> I'll second. I'll second. <laughs> all right. All in favor? All right. All, right. all opposed? Um, can I comment on the, the description? <laughs> so, the, 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 the director. Director, yep. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the only thing that struck me in, in some of the discussion we've had was that right now, Tim teaches these courses for right. the lifeguard for the other yeah. stuff. Is that something that we can say, guns? Well, no. Okay. Is that something that we can reasonably expect that a future candidate for that position is going to have? Uh, I hear you on that. I also have my concerns on that. However, the way that, um, so it would be required, right? Because that's something that we do in-house and it is something that we, for many reasons, would like to keep in-house. Um, majority of it is being able to keep the quality control and it also keeps the prices down for the staff um, and kind of brings that return that we're looking for with staff specifically uh, at the beach as well. So um, in the past, and this is one of the things I had talked to uh, at that select board meeting is that, you know, prior to Tim being here, I didn't do the lifeguard training. The aquatics is not my wheelhouse, um, but the uh, first aid, HD, uh, CPR, I did those trainings before. Uh, he came on board. So since he had more experience with it, it made sense for him to kind of take that over uh, in conglomeration with the um, lifeguard teaching as well. The other piece to it is in order to in order to be legal, you have to put your staff to do four hours of training every month. So unless you have somebody on staff who's doing that, certified to do it, you have no way of meeting that. that for the professional rescuer, mm -hmm. yeah for lifeguards or professional rescuer. Um, you know, case in point, prior to my tenure here, and one of the things that I tackled first when I got here was 
all of the lifeguards were shallow water pool trained in the town of Littleton. No one was open water trained. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we had, we were teaching swim lessons and none of the swim instructors had WSIs and we didn't have a, a relationship with the American Red Cross where we were an authorized service provider, but we were giving out certificates that said that we were. So, you know, in putting forth these programs, not only from a liability standpoint, but from a standpoint of, you know, producing quality um, programs and quality staff members to do it, it should be an expectation. Whether it's me or the next person, you know, if you look at other rec departments who have aquatics facilities, you would never have somebody who's not certified to do these things. And in this current climate, the ability to attract lifeguards, the ability for lifeguards to find courses, um, it's really something that would be a detriment if you did it. And it is a bit of a challenge to find instructors outside outside your own facilities. You know, you know? just as a cost alone, because one of the certs I don't carry and I, I don't wish to carry if I had to get it, I would, is the is the swim instructor, the WSI instructor. And you know, each summer that we train our WSIs, we pay sixteen hundred dollars for four people. I train our entire staff for eight hundred. So we pay we pay twice as much to train four people as we do to, as we do to train seventy plus. You do all right. Have you you let me give you a ride home, Kevin? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I do hear you on that, but it is it is something that we very much would need to have that. Yeah. Or no, I mean, we it's... would work with someone to work towards getting there. And I'm but not sure. really I'm not a hundred percent sure. I'm ninety percent sure that. The um, CMR for camp requires you to have an aquatics director over the age of 21 on valid certification. Which is, which is? CMR is the, for the camp. Yeah. Right, what's, like, what's, the, what's the, the certification is the? An instructor certification. Okay. Um, Somebody on staff. So that would be your aquatic instructor, your manager, whoever it is. Right. right. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I, so I am one, I think it's fantastic that you have these things and do these things. It's great for the program. It's great for, for the whole thing. Um, I would say in terms of the, <clears throat> this job, does this job description accurately represent what we want in this role? Is it something that we would would solve in an area either by having the camp director or somebody else take on that role? If, the, if there was a, if there was a different assignment of right. responsibilities, is it a is this an integral part of the assistant director's role? Um, I mean, as long as the aquatics is under their purview and then, yes. the beach, then yes, absolutely. Sure. That's true. All right. So we voted for the stipend, correct? Yes. With, all right. Okay. So I will throw this one back up again. Mm -hmm. Oh, wrong way. It's so cool. It is, is it not? We've been dealing with that in the office too. <laughs> are you? You are. <laughs> Why is it so cold? All right. Um, so to a, a review really quickly um, on some of the updates. Uh, we talked about these things last month. Um, but uh, just a, a couple updates with the um, truck itself. So uh, we are currently looking into uh, possibly a hybrid or a electric vehicle. Um, this is something that the the town is a green communities uh, community. 
So we do want to uh, try to go that route. Uh, we're also, uh, I've been speaking with the building department and possibly talking about sharing a vehicle. Um, that's something that, you know, they're going to use it on uh, mornings for inspections and things like that. So uh, evenings and weekends, you know, typically when we do our special events and we need to have a truck, um, we'd be able to, to share that. Um, not sure exactly how that would work in the summertime because uh, the truck does kind of like live down there uh, at the beach in the summer, but we would work it out. Um, so that way it would be able to take um, some replication, if you will, off of the uh, capital requests for this year, uh, which is pretty high across the board. So uh, we will see how that is going to go. Yes, you look so you guys are sharing. So. Potentially, that is an option. Mm -hmm. um, is that we would share it with the building department? Which time do you think it's going to take to coordinate the like during the summer? Are you say you know you guys will figure it out. Yeah. Like how much time are you anticipating that's going to start taking? Well, we would have to. We just have to schedule it, right? So it depends on them and what their inspections look like. So that falls on your shoulders to do it. Potentially. Uh, well, it would work in uh, collaboration with the building department. Right. Yeah. Uh, our, yeah. Our mm -hmm. um, is, questions? Yeah. Is, does the facilities department want the existing truck? I don't know. Is, it would be there... one of those things that they we talked about is it because it does have low miles on it, right? So that's relatively good, but it is getting pretty rusty underneath and it's uh, definitely gotten its fair share of beating up. Um, but George uh, Dumas currently doesn't have any vehicle at all. And he's constantly going back and forth from town hall to here at the police station to the fire station. Um, and he's using his own vehicle to do so. so that was just another component in our larger communications as department heads. So, you know, could this potentially be a benefit to somebody else? If, you know, we're not going to really get that much from selling it because we continue to use it, for, you know? So the main, a chunk of the issue is that it's no longer meeting our needs. Right. So that's the big one. So the trailer itself. Um, so I'm talking about the special events trailer. Uh, it weighs 2,990 pounds. Um, empty. Hmm? Empty. Empty. Oh, empty. <laughs> um, and the towing capacity of that Ford Ranger is 3,100 pounds. So we could tow it empty. Um, but just barely, uh, we'd be crossing our fingers. Uh, so, you know, it realistically doesn't work. So, um, I know for whatever reason, they don't want us to say, but, you know, Tim uses his own truck most of the time, uh, to all the time. All the time. <laughs> um, there have been a few interesting situations where I've moved it with my own car too. Um, it's definitely worked a lot better. <laughs> But it would, uh, yeah, it makes a lot more sense for us to be using that box trailer to have something appropriate that can do it. Okay, cool. Um, sailboats, so uh, I went out and I actually took some some pictures where we're at now. Um, I know, Saul, so you've seen these sad little creatures. Um, we definitely, they have been, fiberglass and fixed uh, a billion times over uh, the last few years. So um, we definitely want to get to a place where we could be able to replace most, if not all of the 10 sailboats that we've had for years, um, and then start working on a maintenance and depreciation plan. Um, so we could kind of start from scratch and move forward because these boats are literally held together with duct tape. It's fiberglass. And fiberglass. <laughs> no, there's, there's duct tape on it. There's not a piece of duct tape on it. <laughs> there are times in the summer. Um, 
So yeah, we, we definitely need to be able to update, um, you know, us getting into repairing these boats on our own, you know, working with fiberglass and all that stuff. It's, it's not great. It's not something that we should be doing. We can, uh, I know Tim has the experience of doing it, but I, I don't think that's something that we should be doing. Um, we did send a boat, a couple boats out, um, last, what was it 2019? Um, and you know, they worked on them over the winter and, you know, it cost us almost $2,000 just to get that professionally worked on. So, um, with the state of which these boats are in, it would just be astronomical to, to send them out. Um, so it doesn't make any sense to do so. So when you think it's this Yep, that's on the 24 request. Yeah. So all these ones I'm just giving you are, are the ones that are on the request for this year. That will also create a lot of time because Tim has to spend a lot of time fixing the other ones. True. Mm -hmm. okay. And some of the, the staff, um, it depends on where they are. Some have capability of doing it and yeah. some don't. Some but boat repairs on any of their job is great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I said the waterfront director should have some ability to do, to do so. Yeah. All right. Um, then we've got the resurfacing of the basketball courts at 300 King. Um, on the picture, you can see we've got some cracking that's uh, going the length of the courts. Um, there's some of the cracks on the edge and, uh, you're starting to see some of the, the pock marks, uh, and those just kind of get bigger and uh, erode as time goes on. So, um, you know, we do want to be able to, um, put funds into being able to resurface these while they're still in fair enough repair, right? We don't want to get to the place where the cracks are so damaged, like over at the tennis court, you know, at the uh, town hall that you actually have to, that one, I don't think is repairable, but most cracks you would have to, you know, grind them out, build them in, then have to resurface over all of that. So, um, you know, we want to be able to get into the habit of resurfacing them so that can, they can still stay in, in good shape for as long as we can keep them. So this this maintenance would just be a little bit of patch up and resurface. Uh, yeah, I don't think they would have to do too much patchwork because the I mean the cracks are there, right? We don't want them to get worse, um, but I don't think they would have to fill too too right. much. We're not talking about like you know the drilling slide. out like a whole um, component of it. Um, yeah. Budget for that or no? Oh, sorry. So that one is, I don't know why that didn't make it on there. No apologies. Um, that one was, it's close to like 54,000, I believe. Yeah. In, in addition to aesthetically, most. Use more that affects the actual play as well. Right. So those are just right. Yeah. Had had this been on a maintenance cycle, however, we're talking thousands of dollars, not tens of thousands of dollars. So is that what we're moving towards? That's yeah, yes. that's what Alicia. I just wanted to re-highlight and emphasize what Alicia just said. And that's the biggest thing is we need to do a better job, whether it's sailboats, whether it's everything, it has to be a maintenance plan. And it has to be something that we come up with that says. Anything we have, even if it's this bench, we're talking about putting it in. You it know, to be on some sort. Do it, does that list exist somewhere, no. or it is someone? Or is that like on the like wish list or like what's the plan? There can be one. Uh, it's just not there yet. And you know, this goes back to the conversation we've had forever. Is you know, this isn't necessarily a capital thing. This is an ongoing maintenance. This is. This preventive maintenance and, and planning. Right. But it's also something that the park department can't hold as a threshold coming out of programs. It has to be something that, you know, just like when we talk about 
highway needing more parks guys to mow grass and things like that. It has to be something that's put into the general fund that we know that, okay, this is our year that we're replacing backwards or doing this. You know, one of the things that we haven't done that should be done is the backboards at Castle should be inspected just like the backboards at the schools every year. You know, yeah, they're doing like the second shots. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, that's second shots for a reason. Well, the reason that you're doing that is because when those courts are installed, the basketball hoops are lopsided. One, all the hoops are either 16 or 18 inches offset. From end to end. The courts all go like this. They were never graded properly. Mm -hmm. well, that's, but they're not going to fix that, right? No. That's not going to fix. But no. in order to fix, you know, the data, because what you run into is like the tennis court, for instance, right? If you don't properly resurface it and there's not a watertight seal, then you get the, you know, penetration, which causes the ice heaves, which causes the cracks. And then once the asphalt underneath has been compromised, then you have to replace. There's no way to prevent it. Whereas if you, you know, spend the thousands of dollars it takes on the prescribed, you know, whatever the court is, whatever the material is being used, then you don't have those issues. I mean, it's New England. You're going to have those issues from time to time. And, you know, we have trees around all of our things, which unfortunately also cause issues. But, you know, in future thought, as we start to plan these things and do these things, this is where the preventive maintenance piece could really help us. No, I mean, it's, it's something that we haven't been able to get to because we've always been trying to, to play catch up, right, with, with the finances. So for us to be able to move forward with having the revolving and us being in a good place that we can actually start creating some of the reserve, that's some of the things that, you know, we want to be able to be able to pay for those things on our own, right? Um, but I do agree with Tim that th this is something that it is a facility of the town, right? And to use the program fees, which is what we would be doing, right? If we did do um, reserve funds, um, but you know, you would be using those fees from programs to to pay for some of these other things that potentially the the town should be paying for. However, all of that has to be budgeted and approved and go through FinCom and select board. And, you know, right now they're, they're having a hard enough time being able to um, get something that's going to be compromising for everybody. You know, they're not going to add this on. This is not the years they're going to like, do it. Like something that this board can do. And we've talked about this before is I believe it was like two months ago. We talked about it as a, as a, for instance, is you could create a policy that says that anybody who wants to reserve courts of cast on the trees, when we were specifically talking about the summer men's basketball league, you know, is that there's a fee associated with that. And all those fees are put into a bucket that is strictly for utilizing things like this. And that's how everywhere else works. It really does. So those are the things that we can proactively do that also, you know, might we need help with things like this in the future, 100%. Yeah. You know, is there a general fund request or even a capital request to, to fix some of the bigger things? Yes. But from our end, as the professionals in the field, that would be the way to go about these things. Looking at user fees, looking at how much, you know, is there a user fee that we attach to all of our basketball programs? That's an extra $10. And, you know, we set that aside. Like all of these things are our policy that you can create or that we can create as a director, assistant director that helps these things become more fiscally responsible. I'm done asking questions for the time, I'm sorry. Really? Why? No, oh, you ask good questions. What's that? You want to get the answer? No. You want to get or? <laughs> no, it's it's a good thing because then we're able, you know, there might be other people out there that have that question as well. So to be able to educate the public about it, it's stuff that, you know, we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis and we're, you know, we're already into it. We know where when it is, so you may not know. So And it's also nice to be able to say like, hey, yeah, we've talked about that five times in a meeting. It's not something that's new because a lot of times we bring these things up. It's like, oh, this is the first time we're hearing about it. And the reality is we've had that conversation 10 times. You are. 
<laughs> <You're been warned. laughs> um, and, and the last one that's on here is uh, replacing the old dock that was at uh, Long Lake with uh, our can dock system, which is uh, what we have over on the boat side of the dock where the sailboats are uh, moored. So um, I guess if it's up on land, it's not called mooring. What would you call that? What? When we take them up off the dock and tie them onto the dock, the sailboats. Never mind. Dock. Anyway, dock. we're docking them. Stored. Stored. <laughs> stored. They're stored and locked. Um, so, uh, you know, this replacement dock would not be as, um, involved as that one, because we wouldn't need to be able to have like places to put the boats, et cetera. It literally would be, um, configurable. However, we wanted to do it, honestly, straight. or we could just do straight. Um, so the way we have done it in the past is that it would go straight down, uh, the middle of the swim box to be able to create the two zones. Um, that way, you know, it's, it's something, one of the zones, um, sorry, the locations for the lifeguards to be able to control from. Um, so it's, it is something, it would be nice to have that back in. Um, so yeah. Yeah. There's so many reasons why we, sh we, it would be nice to have it back. The docks that we did have, they were failing. The plastic one was, had holes in it. So it blocks were taking on water. Um, the metal one was completely wrecked. We used it for, during COVID, we used it as a fishing dock off Lakeshore. By the time that summer was over, it was broken, it was beaten down, it definitely saw some wear and tear. So, you know, for the reasons Alicia's pointing out, um, when I did start here, it used to be configured in a different direction, which is not conducive to our lifeguard safety. So straight is best. <laughs> um, lifeguards need to be able to see behind the dock, so it will not be an L or a T or yes. any other configuration. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm but just yeah. saying we have the ability to do so because can docks is amazing. And you if you wanted to like, you know. Yes, but that's why it is a straight yeah. dock. Yes. Um, if anybody's kind of thinking in their head. Well, oh, that's what going to be too hard. No. 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 Because it's over it. It, but, yeah, right, the, but it gives you, us the ability to say this is zone one and this is zone two. There's a beautiful video I made. It's on the Facebook page and it's also on the website. It's on YouTube. Zone to protection. Um, but you can say like, hey, zone one's open. Or zone two is swim at your own risk. And as long as it's clearly posted and identified, we can do that. Okay. However, if zone one lifeguard is sitting there and there's an L doc, <coughs> then behind yeah. that is yeah. your is your hazard. Yep. So um, So if anybody's looking like what this would look like, and essentially the piece, if you look at the stick doc that's out there right now, it's exactly that. That's the piece we'd be looking to buy and duplicate one to put in the middle of the sweat box. So it would be 50 feet going out from the center of the beach. Six poles. So st still holding poles. What? Yeah. Still holding with poles that are driven. Yeah, the, the poles from this combine are much, much easier to work with. The other ones have the screws on the ends. And by the time you get down about 18 inches, there's that really just rock solid layer. These are just. The new ones have like just a spear on the end and they just go in so smoothly. Is the, does the can dock stay in the, for the winter or is that coming out? So it depends on how hard the ice freeze gets. Um, but, you know, it's it's meant to, it's can stands for Canada. Okay. So it was, it was designed so as the ice freezes, it actually stays on top of it and the sheet will slide back and forth because it's polymer. Um, if the ice, you know, were to get thick enough, it could wreck it theoretically. Um, here we haven't had that issue in the past two years. Um, but you know, we've also can just you know pull those six poles and drag it up onto the boat ramp once we close the. We generally don't close the boat ramp until the first snow, significant plowable snow, not the other day, possibly Thursday. It's not coming here. So. Um, no, I. Just, I because it is nice, actually, for skating. <laughs> That's right. Maybe I don't want to say that. <laughs> don't say that. No, it, it has. No, it's, got, it's got use, and people have been very respectful to the surface. I've seen people do it, and it does. It provides a nice area for that. Yeah, so so much skates on it. And in two years, and you know, we had a pretty significant freeze last year. It did exactly what it was meant to do. It floated up above the ice. It you know locked itself in by probably a quarter inch, and it was good to go. 
I mean, the other thing, you don't really have to worry about getting thick, thick ice out there because you've got the the water flowing through there as well. It's not. Yeah, no, you know, no, I, was, I didn't know if the the planning was to leave it generally or or pull it. Yeah, no, I guess not to have that. Um, so the, the last thing, we talked about this a little bit last time, so I'm just giving you a little bit more of an update and uh, a request um, to be more active in this one, I will say. Um, so the two parcels for Indian Hill Music um, are uh, going to be presented at the February special town meeting. Um, theoretically, February 7th is what we said, but it could move back a little bit. Um, so parcel, there's there's two different parcels to it. So one of the parcels, which is um, U42-2-1, is only land. Um, so that is something that we could purchase with CPC funds. Um, so, you know, we can have those, start those conversations and try to move forward with that. Um, it's only about just under an acre of land, um, and it's been assessed online for about $411,000. I don't know if that's what they're going for or not. What do you know? What's that? I, I have vague recollections that we're talking about doing the boundary. So. Well, that would be future after it's purchased. Right now there it's like there's a section that's a big U uh, that includes Indian Hill and the parking lot. And then the part that's up front that would fill in the U, um, that's the one that's just land. So um, the we could not use PPC funds to purchase um, or help with the purchase of the actual building and parking lot, but the, the parcel that's just land we could do. Um, so just a, a little bit of, um, I guess, public service announcement. So one of the questions has been like, well, why don't we just let this property go and, and have you know a company come in and we'll get tax revenue off of that. So, that would be great if you could tax it, um, but there is a special restriction on the property uh, that it can only be sold to tax exempt, either educational, religious, or nonprofit organizations. So the town would not gain any benefit um, from taxes on um, allowing this property to, to go be sold to someone else. Um, the space is also directly abutting to the high school, um, which is very useful uh, for the town in general. Uh, if the high school ever needed to you know, expand or, or whatever they would need to potentially do, that's that's an opportunity for them. Um, currently, we do have this beautiful uh, building that was the Indian Hill Music Center. Um, and for us as a department um, for Parks and Recreation, this would be a good home for us to be able to move to that would actually meet our space needs and allow us to be able to grow um, into the future, which is, you know, Again, we, we love being able to be in 41 Shattuck, and, but we're already growing out of that space. And, you know, we've only been there a short period of time. So theoretically, a building that we're going to go into, it's something we should be able to, you know, live in for 15 to 20 plus years. Um, and this would allow us to do that. Um, the other additional uh, positive about being able to purchase this space is that um, it directly abuts the high school tennis courts. So um, we had gone all of us through this whole process of trying to create a um, plan for the tennis and pickleball. So you know if the town is going the route that they're going to fix the tennis courts at the high school this would give us an opportunity to create pickleball courts and we could have all of that as a facility together um so you know we would have some really good options as far as recreation um if you know we would move forward and be able to get this so um it's a relatively new thing 
Um, we've known about it for like the last few months. I mean, we always knew it was going to be sold, right? Because we knew they were looking for rotten. But um, so this is something, you know, if you can get out there and, and talk to the community and really sort of uh, explain what the opportunities that we get with this, um, because if it, you know, we're going to go to the special town meeting, a lot of times when we make decisions at special town meeting, you have a few hundred people that are making decisions for the 10,000 of us that live here. You know, so we would really need to be able to have support there um, that night if we, we really want to be able to, to get this building to purchase for the town. Um, so one of the things that uh, Tim and I are going to be working on is just trying to come up with a game plan of how we would use the first floor and the bottom floor. Um, there's been talk about potentially moving the superintendent's office to the second floor, the top floor of the building. Um, so, you know, we want to be able to have something to be able to present of how we would use the space. Um, so I think that's pretty much everything. You got anything else extra on there? No. Um, I think, you know, once we put together the plan and send it to you guys, take a look at it. Um, obviously, you know, if you guys have any ideas, um, a lot of the people in this room, the kids are users, and you yeah. guys have great ideas as far as like what we put forth. Um, right. Same thing if you have any friends who have any idea of like what you guys would like to see. Um, these are all good things to put forth. It's you know the community building. It's hopefully going to be the community center, and there's things that we're going to be able to deliver and visions that we're going to be able to produce that are going to help you know grow not only the rec department but the opportunities for the residents of Littleton. Yeah. Um, you know, let's throw it out there because the more stuff that we can put into play and eventually bring to fruition, the better off that it's going to be. And, you know, the reality is I don't know what the cost is, but for us to build this building outright is going to be much more than 4.3 or whatever it is. And right. it's one of those things that even if we get in there and we can start some operational space and, you know, have those visions and dreams kind of pop up over the next five to 10 years and, and build out the space. It's, it's an opportunity for everybody. Yeah. And I know at one of the FinCom meetings, there has been members that have brought up dislike of the pool option. Um, but the reality is, you know, when, when we talk about capital and creating these, it's, you know, what we foresee the, the community meeting, right, over the next 10 years. And when we create the 10-year plan, it's that, right? We're looking at what we potentially could do along the way. So, you know, something like the, the new field creation, that's already been on there for probably 10 years. And that's not how capital should operate. Unfortunately, that's where we're at. We're trying to get to a place where, um, we are really genuinely going to use the 10 year plan. Um, so the pool is something I think I have pushed out till like 2028, right? So it's not something that's happening this year. It's not something that's happening next year. It's something that, you know, if we do foresee, I mean, we foresee it, that it's a need, but um, like I said, we're going to do this statistically valid community needs assessment. And that's something that the community, you know, really wants to be able to see, then we now would have space to be able to do that because there would be an appropriate around amount of space um, in that second piece of property um, that you could have a pool added onto this Indian Hill complex. Right. So um, it's something that we're creating that vision and putting it out there. It's not something that we're expecting to have tomorrow, future of the game. Yeah. The I think the, I think the, my sense of that objection was more that it's not from you, but in general, the way it was presented was not a clear picture of the planning. And it appeared that it was a request for capital to build a pool this year. And that was the sort yeah. of <laughs> the misunderstanding. <laughs> the misunderstanding. Yeah. Right. That, that's my sense of it anyway. I got it. I could be entirely off base on that. Yeah. That's my sense of it. Um, so we have the, there's like a, a whole grid in each year 
it, it says how much you want to spend for what items. So yeah, this that, is was, that was not what was presented to mm -hmm. the finance committee. So interesting. Uh, okay, they just got a list with the goal was the second item on the list. So interesting. Well, that's interesting. Uh, yeah, that's that's not great. Right. So um, okay. Yeah. Good to know. Um, I think we we had a, a brief discussion. Maybe that that we may want to have some some more discussion yeah. with them. Maybe there is a some representatives of the two boards or somewhere else to get oh, some better, yeah, some clarity in the. the Right. planning process and and that's part of the you know like when i'm asking right now with um indian hill to to try to like go out there and you know make sure you're telling people about this and um you know answering questions it's something that i think we should get in the habit of doing as a whole um not just for like one specific project um but i think a lot of times being able to um, repeat that information is a lot more helpful than, you know, people hear it just the one time. Um, so, yeah, that would be very helpful for my of you. So is this, you said this is coming up possibly February 7th, talking about perhaps purchasing. purchasing. Right. Is, is there a danger of the town losing out on this opportunity? For sure. Okay. Yeah. I think this is our one go at it. Yeah. They have, does the town have like right of, what is it, right of first refusal yeah. or whatever? And so, yeah, we're going through the, the process with them right now. Uh, I think there are some people that really are not in support of it. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, but like I said, there would be uh, a huge benefit to the, the town to be able to have it. I know some people have likened it to purchasing something like Robinson Road, right? And that was a historical purchase, but that building was completely falling apart and it, it wasn't a great purchase, I, I think. Um, but this is completely different. This is a very sound building. This is something where you know, you had an entire music school running out of it for multiple years that, you know, they just vacated so that they could be in this new, beautiful, glorious spot, right? It's not like it's it's been left because, you know, it's in horrible shape or, you know, it, it's a, a really, really genuinely great opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Or minimal, or like we talked about, you know, over the next, you know, five years, it's something we can work on those projects and, and change it and adapt it as we go on, rather than, you know, if we try to build some building, it's going to cost millions and millions and millions of dollars, where this is just like, you get it, have it, and then you can start like molding it. For minimum cost, you could right. get in there make the building work for us very quickly and then you could you know figure out what's the next step what's the next need the one nice thing is that you know unlike other opportunities is that rec going in there we have the ability to perpetuate revenue to create the next project right which is what our goal is and going so towards. Would you move like the uh, well, yes. Yeah. I mean the sky's the limit. You know, yep. initially, you know, you could look at anything from moving the club to buying a school bus and moving Camp T there. And you know, basing Camp T out of there in the summer where you have access to, you know, sports fields also and you know, bust them to the lake if that was something, you know. One of the things that was pulled was the, you know, the Warren article that we talked about. Eventually, they're going to redesign Shaker Lane and we're going to be out of there. So we're going to need, you know, okay. there's going to be different things that come down the pipe. And this is an opportunity for us to get into a space where 
we can utilize and the community can utilize for various different things. You know, the auditorium is quite large. And as you can see, it's got a wood floor and there's, you know, always challenging spots for gym space and things like that. So there's opportunities that we can open up, you know, not only a great case in point is, you know, if we, if we have the ability to maybe create maker spaces, you know, right now, one of our biggest issues is we had a thriving pottery um, and one of the biggest drawbacks was that the kiln is in the high school and we ran into issues firing pottery and doing things and, you know, the shared space and times that we needed it. Um, and, you know, those are things that like, okay, well, if we had the ability to create a space like that, not only could it be used for programming for park and rec, but it could be used as a rental opportunity for Saul who loves doing pottery, but he doesn't own his own kiln. And now there's a place that a community member can come and, you know, utilize for their own space. So there's opportunities, you know, coming from the recreation background that aren't just benefits to the department, they're benefits to community members and that building, you know, I, I've always been a proponent of uh, that any building that's built should be maximized potential, right? Shared restrooms are better than, you know, building two restrooms for the same cost and, you know, things of that nature. And, you know, that building should be open. If it can be open 20 hours a day, great. There's a way to figure that out and, you know, get your biggest bang for your buck. You know, if there's a way to, you know, have a couple pieces of gym equipment and that's included with your beach membership or your pool membership down the, down the road. Great. You know, anything that can save the community member and give them value for what they're already paying for in their taxes is, is our charge. I think the other key thing is land where to put something like that sure. yeah that's the i mean that's that's the real thing this is land that's available you're not sourcing it anymore right you, yeah, right. you, can't, you can't get you can't create more land right. i mean if we have a hard enough time trying to figure out where to put a field or if we have to put a senior center right. on a tennis court you know you have all of this that already exists and it just is yeah, so, one of, you know, one of the first proposals we put forth a year ago before the, we even designed that Cooper property was if this came to fruition, you know, it's the perfect place to take away part of the parking lot. You're already site worked pretty much because it's asphalt for two tennis courts and four pickleball courts. Right. And there's the room to do it there. And you really, you know, it's not that big of a change for, you know, you have to maybe re, you know, put down another four inches of asphalt, maybe do a little bit of regrading or, you know, even tear up the old stuff to get the base that you need. But, you know, at that point, it's it's minimal compared to what we would have had to do to get the Cooper property up to that standard. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and that's something turnkey, even if the building wasn't open, even if you got, you know, we, we were figuring out what to do, but you own the property and that was the first step. And, we got those tennis courts back in line and we got the pickleballs and we had the ability to open a couple restrooms if you're over there playing. And we had parking to do that. It, it meets the need. There's so many things and reasons why it's a great opportunity. You know, and 0.93 acres doesn't, doesn't grow on the ground around here. You know, just to have that space, even if it's a, a park with a couple of picnic tables for the next five years until, you know, it's utilized in a, in a different way. It's more than that because both parcels four, together is four point five. No, I'm just saying the oh, okay. the the open land. Oh, right. Yeah, it's, it's almost an acre. Yeah, it's almost an acre. It's point nine three or nine four. Mm -hmm. Isn't there? I mean, isn't there a reasonable amount of open land associated with the building? There is. Okay. I'm just saying for that particular parcel. Yeah. Yeah. Even if you did nothing with it, right. because ideally that would be hopefully where we would put something in the future. In the future. <laughs> It's a great space to be able to have as a little pocket park. Um, yeah, even now as it is, it could totally be uh, an is that, park. Is that side of town, you know, we talk about it all the time. All of our recreational offers or offerings are, you know, solidified within like a 0.4 mile area. Yeah. You know, when you look at, you know, recreation and everything else, you know, one of the biggest things in the entire country is like giving people the ability to have a 10 minute walk to a park. It's a national campaign. So, <laughs> so there's so much, you know, yeah, yeah, I, so I mean, get out there. <laughs> get out there, friends. Have those conversations. And there are minimal, just, you know, to, there are minimal things that need to be done to the exterior, siding, couple group yeah. things. But for the most part, like Rich said, it's a sound building. It's yeah. not something that we have to worry about. There's, you know, what their capacity is on 
a lot. Yeah. And I mean, they would do. And it's a perfect place to do special events. We have plenty of parking. Right. You know, for yeah, the yeah. highest tier. You can do that there. You can do trunk or treat. You can do all sorts of things there. <laughs> do it all. Um, all right, any other questions? Okay. Um, so as a public service announcement, we always do this. So next month we will be reviewing the beach rates and hours and dates of operation. So um, for any any individuals that want to come, uh, they're welcome to come. Um, it'll be same that time, same that channel. Um, so that will be on next month's agenda. Just to make sure we cover all of our bases. Yes, sir. Can we post something down the beach, wherever, I don't care. Okay. So that it's known to the folks who live, walk around the beach that that is happening. Because I think there was a criticism one year that nobody knew right, we were talking about beach rates, you know, and beach stuff. Um, so I think mm -hmm. just to, I don't think anyone will look at it or even show up, <laughs> but as long as we can say it was posted at the beach somewhere around the neighborhood uh -huh. there. So we just cover ourselves. Okay. Please. Okay. And that is the, that's a long um, The time, correct. Yeah. Uh, are you doing a show or what's it? Second week in the show. The show. Second week in the show that you show. Come right up. Come right up. Snow gear. Snow gear all ready to go. Um, so this one, and I just. Oh, go ahead. Yes. If you could share that with us before the meeting, because it is a lot of deep, like the proposed. My proposal is we have accomplished what we needed to last year. Um, however, I did give some documentation out today to be reviewed and am accepting any proposals that are put forth. <laughs> I'm going to review. <laughs> leave, it, leave it at that. <laughs> Um, there is a motion on the table to just kind of relook and just see, like, okay, in order to not run into what we did with the beach rates and with the fields, you know, what is that appreciation schedule? Right. The other way. <clears throat> so, uh, and Aaron has graciously uh, asked to take that on. So I gave him all of the historical data. Uh, he has one document that got lost in transit today. So I have another one that is on my desk for him. But um, yeah, just we'll put that together. Um, I'll wait for Aaron's numbers to come in. I already have my numbers put together. Um, so, you know, based on where we're at right now, uh, even with the increase, we should see a profit, you know, of about 10 grand again in my preliminary projections. Um, last year, we had a pretty, pretty good year. Um, so we just, uh, just keep moving forward with it. The, Ideally, you know, one of the things that I always kind of waffle back and forth about is our programming of, you know, sailing loads a lot of our lifeguard salary. You know, that's a that's a 40, almost $50,000 chunk of what keeps us afloat down there. Um, beach passes only cover about half of it. So to the point of do the beach passes cover what they're necessarily supposed to? No, beach passes in the snack shack really only cover about 62% um, when they're put together. So, you know, but I also believe that we are at kind of a, I think we're kind of at that teetering point right now. You know, we, we didn't really see the numbers come in like they did previous years. We had one year that was throttled back because of COVID, but I think we're kind of at that point residents and non-residents that for what is offered and the hours that were open and et cetera, et cetera, that it's a cheap, it's, it's the rate that we should charge. You know, we, we're not offering swim lessons right now. We're not, there's a lot of things that we're not doing. You know, there's not 
pool furniture out there for people to sit on. There, there's a lot of amenities that don't come with the two and three hundred dollar price tags of you know some of the things that are offered. You know, there's not cabanas, there's not all of the other things that you might find at some of those other things. So these are the things that we really need to look at. Um, but like I said, it's it's still sailing does cover a large portion of how we cover the the net loss on the beach every year. Which if I had fifty thousand dollars from the sailing program, you know, minus wages and minus equipment and everything else, at the end of the sailing program, if I had ten thousand dollars to put back into sailboats, buy new boats every year, that's the way it should be run. Okay. And that's what we're trying to. But it's not next. feasible to do that, right? We're going to really make the boats first. Yeah. The yeah. boats. Yeah. yeah. But we need we need to figure out the balance between the programs of. The Right. But it's 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 in everything that we do that we run up against that. And it's just been we're very fortunate that we have a team that creates programs that are very well attended and we're able to move things around to you know really keep nice things. I mean, we do in the past five years we've upgraded a lot of our stuff and we have nice things and we've had the ability to keep them nice, but we've kept them nice because we've stayed on top of it. Which we need to continue to do. Will we need to readdress the rates of renting space down there? How we discussed that at, was it during the summer? We, we just... need to readdress not the rates. We need to readdress. I have it in my notes, but there was conversation. About the I know there was a specific ask. Stuff. Yeah, but yes, we will. We can. That'll. I'll put that on. Okay. Because we we have not put the the grills in yet. Um, I'll be perfectly honest. My the grills are two things. Number one, it was the the labor and the time to put them in, and number two, the thought of we always have an onshore breeze there and pushing it back into the neighborhood <laughs> where it's the best place to put charcoal grills. Oh, yeah. Right. So you know, Lynch and I talked about this the other day. Is it something that we have the Eagle Scouts and we build a pavilion at Bay Park and a pavilion at 300 King and a pavilion at the beach. And we put one at each and under those pavilions is a picnic table and a trash can. And that's what we ran at each of the facilities for birthday parties and everything else. Like that's the space they feel. Now, that's something that could be a better solution all the way around for the question you're asking. Alicia and I just talked about this like two days ago. Yeah. But that could be something that, you know, we could, we could do that as a service project and you know, over the course of the next two, three years, accomplish that. But then that also gives us your designated space at these places that we're always looking for. Because we still have not created what those designated spaces. The only only thing that's somewhat close to it would be the sailing bed. Right. That's right. It. Right. Really. And uh, I mean, at the beach, my thought is, is by the new maple tree we planted on the side between the sailing tent and the boat ramp, we put one of the grills there. Um, because it's between the houses, so I wouldn't necessarily be worried about it like blowing directly. Whereas if you put it over the picnic grove, it's going to be going right in there. You know, and on nice days, you don't necessarily want charcoal smoke and everything else going in there. So, you know, when we really kind of went back and reevaluated that, that was one of the main concerns and one of the reasons that we didn't necessarily pull the trigger. And then COVID happened. <coughs> All right, any new business? Um, so February meeting is actually on Valentine's Day. Are you guys okay with that or are you not okay with that? <laughs> <laughs> the romantic oh. at the end there. <laughs> been married a thousand years at this point. <laughs> at this point, the patch is over. I wouldn't worry about it. Oh boy. He didn't mean to miss his Oh Oh boy. Try that. <laughs> yeah, screw her. She got screw her every day. It's fun there. Every day is Valentine's Day. Oh, there we go. There we go. That's going to be on his team show. The magic is going to be Scotty Brown, 2022. I can guarantee that none of our spouses will ever watch that. I'll bet on it. Yeah. Uh, I guarantee you that if you are going to win, then this is here. Uh, <laughs> it will be posted on Facebook. Yeah, it will be on Facebook. One person. <laughs>
Uh, and we can always revisit it in the January meeting. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I don't even have to make a decision now. I just feel like. Scott but, will be here in January saying, hey, guys, I'm really busy. That <laughs> so my, my only thought is if there is, in fact, going to be a special meeting on the 7th, 7th, it might make sense to have a meeting immediately preceding that. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah. If, because it potentially would be some business or some right. other things that we would want to do before that. Kate is also at the Shogo Chaperoning Kids. Yes, I won't be able to do it. Right, will not be here on that Tuesday, <laughs> or or the Tuesday for the foreseeable future until the end of March. <laughs> oh my God, it goes that long. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Yes. Um. So, just throwing it out there, you can think about it. Um. We could, as we get closer to right. them that creating that special meeting, we'll know when that time is. They're yeah. going to do that fairly soon, right? Yeah. I mean, there's a planning work meeting this week. Yeah. yeah. Perhaps we could do it, though, if it's Tuesday and Monday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, yeah. We could just uh, okay. amend the date and uh, the day. we we'll do it on a Monday. So, what I will do, but. I mean, if you're stuck in. Uh, Lucky enough to be at the show, but good choice. I'll be chaperoning children for the next few weeks. <laughs> for the next few months, should we look at a different day for? I don't know. It only February. impacts. It only impacts what January and February, March. January, February, March. Right. March so, all the way to the second line. week in March. Uh, if we have a snow day or a rain. Oh, we're gonna make it wet now. But that's also potentially the. Uh, so it could be the. the the town meeting business, it's speech business, which is always our most popular day. <laughs> on, on January. Um, it, forget how smoothly that went last year. Uh, it did. No, I, yeah. I'm put the kiss Everyone knows <laughs> they have PTSD from prior years. It's <laughs> on the committee, so. It's been some beauty. Uh, yeah, um, I mean, I would be amenable to having it be Mondays or something different. Okay. So what I will do is um, I'm going to see if they actually solidify what what date they're going to do that special town meeting. So when we come back in January, then we can make that make that date. You're assuming you're sure we can have snow by the first of January. That's why, I, that's why I said by March we might be still skiing. They uh, they were blowing snow this weekend, so we'll see. Um, that's it. Oh, headshots. Rain on Friday. Oh, Friday. No, we're, oh, you did do yours. Yeah, so we got you two. Aaron did. Why don't you just take it out? I said mine in a long time ago. Did you? Yeah, oh, I'm going to go find it. Like a long time ago. So you actually followed the rules. And we're like, it's the original on us. That's not mine. I'm making myself. I did not say everybody. All angles. Yeah. Get one Let's make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> motion to adjourn. Yes. Adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. It's 9 30 29. Let's get the heck out of here. 28. All right. Lovely. Fix the tables. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah. Yes. yes. All the things. All the things. Happy New Year.